What do you think is the best case scenario for AI this year in 2025? What are we going to see by the end of the year uh, that people look back and say, okay, that was amazing. That was fantastic. What's your, what's your thoughts? Best case. Um, I think the video technology has got to the point we can remake Game of Thrones season eight. So that'll be quite good. So, so just uh, focusing on that, off. I mean, how how dead is Hollywood? Uh, it's completely rewired. The, again, the energy of making a movie is massively reduced. Um, but at the same time, at least people can maybe be more creative. Like the video game industry went from 70 billion to 180 billion over the last decade, and the average score in Metacritic went up 5%. IMDb score, 6.3 on average. Hollywood's gone from 40 billion to 50 billion. So mm-hmm. maybe it transforms. Maybe it's new types of media. But Let me ask you a question. When am I going to see... A conversation like this, you know, uh, Jarvis, please make me a movie that is a continuation of, um, of uh, you know, the Star Trek season five uh, and have me in, in there as one of the actors. We have all the technology for that now. It hasn't been put together. So if you use something like Kling's feature reference, you can take a scene from that and it can generate new scenes. We can do storylines. The average film shot is 2.5 seconds. It's dropped from 10 seconds a few decades ago. Mm. And we can do 2.5 seconds perfectly now with almost perfect control. So let's say it'll take a year or two now before anyone can do this. A suitably dedicated studio could do this by the end of the year for a full episode. Insane. Okay, so what else are we seeing this year in 2025? Music's pretty much solved on the media side. Like if you use the new Suno, Udio, the next generation they have coming is insane. Um, I think on medicine, again, we're at that above human level and we trounce them on empathy. Medical chatbots for everyone to help them through their journey and a mental health in particular, I think. We've reached that critical point where the models have gone from not good enough to good enough. We could transform mental health. I think that would be very important. Um, I think you will see the first few breakthroughs in science with novel things generated with the aid of O3 type models. This test time inference. uh, I want to call it thinkference. I think that's a better way of putting it, where the models think longer. Um, And I think those are probably the biggest real impacts. Maybe Siri is not going to be so bad anymore. (laughs) I I can't wait for for Siri not to suck and for Alexa Uh, to actually be useful. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that Amazon has not, they were originally going to put Anthropic behind uh, Siri and I mean, behind Alexa uh, and really powered properly. That sound looks like it's gotten delayed. Well, they're building out a million trainiums with their specialist chips. So good luck to them on that one. Oh. All right, let's flip the script here and say, what's the worst potential outcome for 2025? Complete destruction of the BPO market which will reverberate out. So this business processing outsource, because again, when you use operator now, any technologies that take over your computer, it's a bit rubbish now, but it's the worst it'll ever be. Mm. Anything on the other side of a screen, I think this year is the year, gets displaced, paralyzed on that. And again, this is actually leaning into this whole doge type thing. Get the workers back in. Being in person is going to be good for your job right now, because if you're remote, you'll be the first to go. That's a really important point. And define BPO for folks who haven't heard that term. Uh, business process outsourcing. So outsourcing to India, all the call center workers, all the programmers. Like the AI is better than any Indian programmer pretty much that's outsourced right now. And so you will have impact on those economies right now than the remote workers in the US. I'm going to so see the headlines different. in the Indian Times right now. <laughs> Imad again yeah. says... Yeah, they had to go at me last I think it's very real. I think it happens in two phases. I think phase one, you you have this massive downside. And then phase two, the really good ones just show up and just generate a ton more code because there's just so much more code to be written. But I think it's going to have a really detrimental effect. Any kind of software maintenance, uh, support systems, et cetera, all go out the window very quickly. Uh, very quickly. I had Mark Benioff on <clears throat> this pod uh, a couple weeks back. And he was saying with Agent Force, you know, he's not hiring new engineers uh, and he's repurposing old engineers and he's increased productivity 30%. And that's just going to skyrocket from there. Yeah. If you look at Lovable, Bolt, Cursor, 
like that takes you up to a decent level and they can build whole apps and stacks and they'll just get better and better as the base models get better and better. In fact, one of the things we've started to do for non-engineers who apply to work at our company is they have to do a 30 minute cursor course, this kind of AI assisted IDE. doesn't matter what they are, HR or anything. And then they have to tell us how do their view of the world change. So what does that, course, what does that course teach somebody? how to build an app for HR, how to build an app for anything. Just by talking to it, it's building the app almost live. You can do that today in ChatGPT with Canvas. You can build a React app live. You could like replicate the entire Wii screen or build a HR application. It'll generate it and you're just talking back and forth. That base level of capability increase will cause a realignment. But the downside we're talking about is there's real jobs and real people that have to think what's next. And they have to become experts in AI-assisted and they have to be in person. Otherwise, you're going to start to get disrupted. And I think that has to be a headline. I remember, I that, remember Peter, last, last summer, 38% of IIT placements in India were unplaced yeah. from a top yeah. university. And you're going to get worse. Uh, but this is, just, this is just the beginning. I don't think people are ready for the level of societal disruption that's coming. We, we can't process it. Well, it's because it's lots of little S curves, right? All across, just like every teacher in the world had to ask, can we set chat, use chat GPT for our homework, right? What's our gender? Every single HR department, every engineering department's asking the same question, you know? And it's still not mainstream, but it, clearly it's hitting the headline more and more and more and more. And there's this disconnect beyond, I mean, it was like, again, it was a bit like COVID. <laughs> Those of us in the know, we saw it coming <laughs> and we were like, this is a step change. Until Tom Hanks got it, the world didn't realize. Like, what is the Tom Hanks moment? Is Deep Seek the Tom Hanks moment? Is it going to be something else? It's coming. And it could be very positive for the economy. On the other side, it could be, definitely be very negative for a lot of people. 